The Duo Art Reproducing Piano was built by Aeoli Corporation, and it was first marketed in early 1914, so the technology in this piano is just about 100 years old. The phrase reproducing piano started out as trade copy for Aeolian, for this type of piano specifically, but it's since come to mean any pneumatic player piano that automatically controls loudness of the notes played. And for a piano to play music well, that also needs to be restored and adjusted so it plays well by hand. And the defining feature of most piano music is the control of loudness and softness. When the piano was first invented, the um, idea of a keyboard that would control loud and soft notes based on finger pressure was quite radical. Now we're very used to it. I'll demonstrate on this piano with very soft and loud playing. It's also possible to play a note so softly that it doesn't sound at all. As there I press three keys without making a sound. And down here I can do the same. So a typical pneumatic player piano is operated with power from either foot pedals that provide suction or in this case an electric motor and vacuum pump. And then that vacuum is supplied to what's called the stack. That's a, an array of about 88 different little striker pneumatics, one for each note of the piano. And they're connected by a pneumatic valve to that airflow, and that valve is controlled by a thin tube that brings a signal up to the tracker bar. The tracker bar is the brass bar underneath this paper, and the tracker bar of the Duo Arp has 102 holes in it, and these are all open to close by the paper roll to control how the piano plays. Most of the holes control individual notes in the middle of the page, but the others near the edge control the pedaling, and the note loudness, and the reroll function, and the motor on off switch, and things like that. This slide shows the actual pneumatic stack of the piano during rebuilding, and you can see the 88 individual striker pneumatics. And this view of the stack shows the 88 push rods that press the key levers, and it also shows that the duo art has two hose inlets on the back of the stack. And the stack is split internally into two halves with separate vacuum supplies, one playing treble notes and one playing bass notes. In this grand duo art, the stack mounts under the piano and the push rods of the stack play notes by pressing up on the bottom of the key levers as shown by the arrow on the left. And this is musically and mechanically identical to finger pressing down on the key as shown by the arrow on the right. With 10 holes on the tracker bar, the duo art sets the loudness of two separate air channels that are labeled accompaniment and theme. And these two channels are connected independently by other valves to either the bass or treble sections of the stack. And each duo art channel has 16 levels of loudness, numbered level 0 through level 15. Level 0 is carefully set with the minimum pressure needed to play very quiet notes reliably. And in air pressure terms, that works out to about 5 water inches of vacuum or the suction needed to pull water from a glass five inches up a straw and hold it there. Level 15 notes play very loudly with about the same power as the loudest possible for a skilled player with strong fingers. And that's equal to about 30 water inches of pressure. The Duo Art achieves this control with an air pressure regulator design that's really very simple and effective, but quite elegant. And this is called the knife valve. The diagram shows a knife valve design for an upright but the grand works exactly the same way, and this layout's a little simpler to visualize. So the simpler diagram shows an airtight pneumatic chamber, the main body of the regulator. The box at the top is connected to a cloth-covered movable pneumatic leaf below, which is attached to a spring at the lower right, pulling it open. A hole in the back wall of the chamber connects to the pump vacuum, and a sliding piece of wood called the knife slides freely over that opening, cutting off the connection to the pump when the hole is completely covered, as shown at the moment. And the opening at the top right leads to the stack. And as notes are played by the stack, air enters from the stack and is exhausted out through the opening to the pump. The knife is positioned, as you can see, by two metal rods at either end. On the left, the rod connects the knife to what's called the accordion pneumatic. And on the right, the knife is connected to the movable leaf of the spring pneumatic. The accordion has four internal air chambers controlled by four holes on the tracker bar. These chambers are all different sizes. The top one is 1 16th inch tall, and each chamber below is double the size of the one above it. And holes on the tracker trigger the collapse of the accordion sections, and that pulls the left edge of the knife down by the same distance that the accordion collapsed. 
with all the possible combinations, you get the 16 different possible lengths, each 1 16th shorter than the step before. And this shows how the Dewar regulates the pressure at level zero with the accordion fully extended, and that provides about 5 inches of vacuum pressure to the stack. Notes played at lower pressure are pressed so slowly that they usually don't make any sound. The pump vacuum lifts the movable leaf of the regulator slightly, and that stretches the spring just until the sliding knife is lifted to barely cover the opening of the pump. And at that point, the system reaches an equilibrium. The movable leaf won't move upward further because it's already closed the opening to the pump. But if a burst of air enters the chamber, that will relax the spring-loaded leaf just a little bit, open the hole to the pump, and quickly exhaust that excess air until it reestablishes equilibrium. And the tension on the spring sets the pressure in the chamber, which is the same as in the stack, and that sets the loudness of the notes played. So as the accordion starts to collapse, you can see what happens here at level one, where the accordion is 1 16th inch shorter. The collapse of the accordion drags the left edge of the knife down slightly, and the knife responds by opening up a little bit to the vacuum pump, and that stretches the leaf further up and stretches the spring more tightly so that the opening to the pump closes off again. This raises the vacuum to the stack slightly to about six inches, so we're still playing very quietly, but just a little louder than level zero. In exactly the same way, progressively louder levels result from collapsing the accordion further, all the way up to having all four chambers collapsed at level 15, which plays fortissimo notes at about 30 inches of vacuum. And going back to the level zero setting, it's useful to show a little more detail of how the regulator responds pneumatically to the collapse of the accordion. This shows what would happen if the accordion collapsed from 0 to 8 without the pneumatic responding properly. The knife would get moved downward by a half inch, the opening to the pump would be uncovered by a little more than a quarter inch, but this state is labeled transient because it's not stable and it's unlikely to ever really happen in the duor. Instead, as soon as the knife begins to open the channel to the pump, air is quickly exhausted from the pneumatic and that stretches the spring and raises the regulated vacuum pressure in the pneumatic to its new equilibrium level for level 8. And this is much like how the regulator also recovers from a large burst of air that might come in from the stack, like from a big chord being played. Because the pump is very quick to exhaust air, the real response of the accordion looks more like this movement, with it going smoothly from one level to a higher level, with the knife valve remaining mostly closed at each level. So that's how a single knife valve works. The dual warp uses two knife valves, as shown in this cutaway view of an upright expression box. The separate knife valves are labeled accompaniment and theme, and the switching valves are also shown that connect the theme regulator to either the base or treble sections of the stack. The accompaniment regulator normally drives both halves of the stack, and the theme channel only takes over when perforations in the roll signal the louder treble or bass theme notes are to be played. These theme perforations usually appear as pairs of holes, sometimes called snake bite holes. And this picture shows a close-up of the final flourish in the roll used to introduce this video, showing both bass and treble snake bite holes. The numbers superimposed on each perforation indicate the approximate stack pressure used to play each note. Meticulous coding of these rolls allows for very nuanced expression. The grand expression box works exactly the same way as the upright, but with a slightly different configuration. And this picture shows the two knife valves of this particular piano during rebuilding with the airtight fabric covers removed. And this is the assembled grand expression box with all of its important parts labeled. The picture also shows a device known as the crash valve, which opens a direct channel between the pump and the theme regulator at the loudest setting, bypassing the knife valve. Because of the crash valve, this graph shows two pressures for the level 15 theme, one near 33 inches and one near 40 inches of pressure for sustained coatings at level 15. This makes the loudest crashing theme chords play more reliably without having to exhaust the air through the knife valve at all. This is a practical demonstration of how the dual arc uses perforations in the roll to control both the stack pressure and the loudness of notes. I've installed two gauges. The one on the left is measuring the base stack pressure at any given instant, and the one on the right is measuring the treble stack pressure. They're both registering five water inches right now, which is the zero level setting for this piano, with all of the tracker bar holes covered, so none of the accordions are collapsed. It will play notes very softly at this 
setting as you can hear. And the treble and bass notes are at similar loudness. If I change the stack pressure by just a little bit by going to level one, you can see both gauges crept up to about six inches and they will now play a little bit louder. Going up several steps, you can see it goes through intermediate levels. At level eight, it's playing mezzo forte at about 16 inches of pressure. It's noticeably louder at about 22 inches. And at level 15, it's maxed out at about 28 inches. But it goes very quickly back to five if the roll holes or if the tracker bar holes are all covered. Now if I uncover just a treble thin hole, you'll see that the treble gauge crept upward by about an inch to about six, even though none of the accordions are collapsed. That's the zero level for the theme, which is just a bit louder than for the accompaniment note. And that would play a treble note just a little louder. You, if I go up several more steps, you will see that uh, at level eight, the treble is playing at 20 inches and the bass is still at five. You can hear that. If I cover the treble theme hole, but leave the theme setting at eight, and uncover the bass theme hole by using this lever, you can see the situation reverses. Now the bass stack goes to 20 inches, and the treble stack is sitting just at about five or six. Similarly, if we go all the way up to level 15, you can see, or at level 14, the treble is playing at 33 and the bass still at 5. I can reverse that by covering the trigger hole and opening the bass trigger. It's above 30 and the treble is now at about 3. And then at the final level, you can see that the level 15 theme goes above 40 while the bass is still playing at very quiet settings. by playing this role and you can see through the gauges just how dynamically the loudness of the music is controlled by the perforations in this role. <laughs>